Welcome back to another exciting episode of Coffee Break. I'm your host, Officer Trevor Macy with the Public Information Unit, here with a special co-host today. I'm Lori Kimry, and I am with the Community Policing Office out Patrol West. So uh, you're joining me. Chad is out today. Uh, Lori was kind enough to be our guest today, and yeah. she's going to co-host the show with me. So welcome. How do you feel about being here on Coffee Break? Well, I'm excited. I'm glad I got invited. This is my first time. So, Have you seen uh, the show before? I have. My sergeant was on the show and another coworker where I work is, has been on the show. Okay. So we're trending out west, I guess. Yeah. You guys, uh, you guys recently went viral. Yeah. With, uh, we uh, did the uh, Cupid Shuffle with the Mounted Unit video that we posted on the main Facebook page. And man, it went crazy. Tell me how, uh, how that idea came about. What were you guys up to that day? So Friday, we were out at Dunkin' Donuts at Kellogg and West Street doing a fundraiser for uh, the Kansas Special Olympics. So we had the mounted unit out there, of course, trying to pull all the punches to gain all the money. And one of the mounted unit guys was like, hey, we should do this dance line dance video. And our first choice was MC Hammer, but that didn't work out. <laughs> so we tried the Cupid Shuffle and Got the horses to participate in the dance, and man, people just loved it. That's awesome. People love dancing horses. Yeah, oh, who and doesn't? It's, it's pretty impressive to see them, uh, you know, move in coordination like that. Yeah, like the mounted unit they get a lot of uh, a lot of likes anytime they get posted doing stuff. Yeah, and one of the horses was one of our new horses, Gravy. So he oh. he it was his debut. I don't think I've met Gravy. Yeah, Gravy's super soft. He's super cool. How long have we had Gravy? Do you know? I don't know. Just you know, not very long. It was his first event, so he was a little nervous, but okay. I think he's going to be good now that he's got a viral video. Yeah. So uh, one of the things we we want to do on the podcast is let people get to know the officers behind behind the badge, so to speak, behind the uniform. So we ask every guest this question and kind of uh, who is Lori Camry, if you if you boil it down into into a description. Man, I love Halloween and okay. my friends call me goth cop. I think it's <laughs> funny, but you know, I just I just love doing this job. I it wasn't, you know, what I planned to do. I went and got a graphic design degree that, you know, I got through college and yeah. I still use it here sometimes, but you know, I you know, I love dancing and Halloween and I love my dogs. What kind so of dogs do you have? I have two Dobermans. I have an albino Dobermans. white Doberman and a regular black and rust yes so what made you decide to switch from like a graphic design career path to becoming a police officer you know i started with another officer we started in the same class but we were working at some desk job prior mm -hmm. to this and we were always curious what was going on in all these 911 calls you know right. kind of like just wanted to know what was going on so we're like hey let's just try it try out and see if we like it and here we are 20 years later, Wow! still with it. So it just worked out. That's awesome. So 20 years on the department, uh, which areas have you worked and do you have a favorite area? Well, when I very first started, I was clear out east at okay. like, you know, Harry and Rock area, very busy with apartments and stuff yeah. like that. And then I had a community policing officer at the time that said, hey, you should try community policing. I think you'd be really good at it. Mm -hmm. So actually... He put my letter in for me wow, okay. back in the old days. Yeah. And I went through the interviews, and, you know, in 2005, I started doing community policing out at 21st and Mays area, and I've been there ever since. Okay. So I take it you enjoy what you do. I love doing community policing. It's it's flexible. We have all these options to work with communities. So it's obviously police work, but we're also building relationships with people out on the street and we do mentoring mm -hmm. and you know just all kinds of fun stuff, you know, fundraisers. So we get to do like the fun kind of stuff with right. the police department. You get to do the Facebook stuff. Yeah, and the, the Facebook keep stuff. stuff. <laughs> um, tell me about, you guys have a Facebook page out west, right? And you're kind of in charge of that? Yes, we do have a specific Patrol West Facebook page. Um, they were doing a, a trial run to see if people, you know, liked it and, mm -hmm. and, and stuff. So I am in charge. You know, I kind of run it. I'm Obviously, we have different admins that can post on it, but I, I'm i mostly the one that posts on it. So All officers right. will send me pictures from Patrol West that they take, and I post them for them. And so that way it's a little bit more, I guess, personal for uh -huh. people that live out West. I got gotcha. you. A little more condensed to that area right. so they can – identify with things more than they would with yeah if you make something very specific postings. to a certain neighborhood people tend to listen a little bit more closely right 
okay. know. So if it's just a Wichita thing, like, oh, that wasn't my area, no big deal. But if you're like, if it's at Central and West, people are like, oh, that's my area. So they're more apt to call 911 or participate. Yeah. Another thing that you guys are, are well known for doing, and I've gotten a lot of props for, is Second Chance Thursday. Yes. Tell me the story about Second Chance Thursday. How did that come about? What is it? Um, what do people need to know about that? Well, it all started during COVID. So we had a lot of people missing court because of COVID or court were shut down because of mm -hmm. COVID. And we realized that we had a lot of people in the city of Wichita that had traffic ticket warrants. And we're like, well, is there something that we can do to help them so we can avoid them going to jail during COVID, but we can still get them a new court date and maybe they can pay their fines and et cetera. So we got on board with the, the judge and he was like, yeah, let's give it a try and here it's been almost two years later and wow. we're still, you know, it's gotten really popular. Mm -hmm. So how many second chance services have there been? If oh. you know, do you know off the top of your head? I don't because at the, at the beginning we were trying to do it once a month mm -hmm. and it kind of slowed down for a little bit and people started realizing they can just go to the next one. So we decided to do it every couple months to get more people to show up. Gotcha. There was a lot of mistrust. A lot of people thought it was a scam, mm. you know, that they were really going to go to jail. Right. But that's not the case. I mean, as long as it's for traffic citations, obviously we can't do Sedgwick County traffic tickets. Right. Just city of Wichita. Um, obviously we can't do criminal warrants for, you know, domestic violence, DUI, stuff like that. But if you have notice to appear as probation violations or just your standard traffic ticket warrant, come on in, we get you a new court date. And sometimes if it's not something where you have to go to court, we have court there as well. And if you just pay your fine, you can sometimes avoid the court cost fee, which oh, makes nice. it cheaper. Yeah. And then you can just be done with it altogether without having to go to jail, having to go to court, going right. through that whole mess. I mean, who wants to go to jail over a traffic yeah, nobody, ticket? Nobody yeah. wants to do that. <laughs> and you guys had one last, uh, was it last month or the month before? Two months ago. Two months ago uh -huh. that had a ton of people show up right yes we were so busy we could hardly keep up and that's insane man we had so many people and you know i think the dmv is there so if people are trying to get their license back because mm -hmm. it's suspended and just because of this traffic warrant situation if they get that paid off or they can make payment arrangements with the state they can get their driver's license reinstated there temporarily oh, that's awesome yes so, so we get a lot of messages about second chance thursday on Facebook. When is the next one going to be? We have an answer today. We do. Uh, we'll throw the flyer up there. The next one, September 15th. Uh, do you want to talk about what's going to happen there, where it's going to be? Yes. So it's going to be at the old downtown library, not the new library, but the old one where they used to do the COVID tests, the vaccines, the and vaccines everything. and stuff. We're going to be there. Um, we're going to have the DMV there. So if you have license questions, we're going to have city court. So if you need to make payments or even talk to them, if you have a PBV or a probation violation, you're just kind of curious what you need to bring or what mm -hmm. you need to do. They're there to answer all your questions. Um, next step is a program that, uh, is a private organization, but they fund, if you're a convicted felon, if you're currently on paper, they will help assist payments for schooling, for tech college, and they will help you get a job. Some of them p get paid more than we do. Wow. So that's something that if you're interested in, we have that available. I may need to sign up. I know. We're <laughs> like, man, if I could be a welder, maybe. But right? And then the Kansas International Driver's License uh, Education. So if you you know speak Spanish and you're not great at English, they can assist you helping get your driver's license. Very cool. Excited to see the uh, the turnout for that one. I'm sure. Yeah, I am too. It seems to get bigger and bigger every time we have one because I yeah. think people are now gaining our trust. Just a funny story at the last one, we had a guy that his roommate, they had a bet going that this was just a scheme and that he was really going to go to jail. Oh, so he came and took care of his traffic warrant and he was like, oh, see? So he won the bet and he went to go to his roommate, got the uh, his winnings for right. the bet and came back and paid his traffic fines and... That's funny. <laughs> so That's it all funny. worked out. Yeah, it's good that it's good that you guys are able to do that and and uh, that people can come and and find out. Yeah, it's really not not anything. It's not a gotcha thing. Right. You're just nope. trying to help people. It's not a setup. And the big thing is that we just, we really don't want to take anybody to jail. So if you do have a felony warrant, something like that, it's still something we have to book on. So right. this is not your event. Yeah. Yeah. Don't show up if you have felony warrants. Right. Or something that they don't specify they can take care of. Right. 
But what do you think, um, going back to kind of the personal side of, of law enforcement and, and being a police officer, what do you think is the most rewarding part of your job as a community policing officer? It's mostly just being able to reach out and hear somebody, hear their story. And sometimes they're having a, a bad day. You know, we mm-hmm. deal with a lot of good people that are having a bad day. And, you know, sometimes you see them later and just having that time to talk to them and see, you know, how if they need any help with anything, not just, you know, punishment, but is there services we can offer to help you out? And you see them a couple years later and they're like, hey, remember me? You helped me that one time and now right. I, you know got everything together and I have a job and that's just the most rewarding part to see people succeed. Yeah. It's, it's super rewarding to have, have those, those moments like that. And it's really cool too. Um, just in talking about like your graphic design background and stuff, there's so many people on this department that have so many different skills. Oh yeah. You can kind of find your, your niche in the department and kind of like what, what you'd be good at. And it seems like anytime we have a project that needs doing, there's always somebody who's like the perfect fit yeah. that we just already have. And it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think people just think we're just, you know, out here arresting people all the time, but we do right. all kinds of different things. We have all kinds of different skills and, you know, art skills and yeah. video skills and music skills and right. you know, so it's just fun to see different personalities on the department. And speaking of personalities, you're very uh you're very Halloween oriented person. Yes. Do you have a favorite Halloween movie that you watch every every October? Oh man. Or is there like a some, whole list that you There's go a through? whole list, but yeah, I mean for me Halloween's every day, so Okay. Okay. Fair <laughs> I enough. I love it. Do you consider so you've seen the Nightmare Before Christmas, right? Yes. Do you consider that a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? Oh, it could go either way. I consider it more of a Halloween movie. But it like, could go both ways. Yeah, I feel like the best time to watch that is like after Halloween, like the day after or like the night of, like leading into Christmas. Right. But that's a solid one. I mean, it's kind of like Die Hard and Christmas movie. That is I a mean, Christmas you know, movie. So. My, uh, so I have a friend, <laughs> this is going to go on a tangent, but I have a friend who, who thinks that um, Die Hard is not a Christmas movie, but Home Alone is a Christmas movie. Just because it's based during Christmas? Right. <laughs> So Die Hard's set during Christmas, right? But right. he says that's not a not a Christmas movie. It's the but same Home thing. Alone is set during Christmas. It has nothing to do with Christmas other than, than the time. Right. But it, by his own logic, he's wrong. So Taylor, if you're watching this, you're wrong. <laughs> and I still uh, will uh, will fight that battle. Yes. Um, so you've, you've seen the, the show. So you know we play a game called One Has to Go. Okay. Have you? I mean, I assume you've seen that part. I don't know right? if I've seen that part. You may not but remember. Yes, educate me. We play a game called One Has to Go. Today is National Waffle Day. Oh. So I have chosen for you four items. Uh, one of the, uh, these items has to go away from your life forever. Forever? Forever. Okay. Um, so we've got pancakes, waffles, crepes, and French toast. Which one disappears from your life forever? You know... I would just say regular waffles if it was Belgian waffles, maybe, but waffles. We're talking all waffles. All waffles. All waffles. You know, I still, I'm, I favor the other three, so probably waffles really? has got to go. Man, I would not get rid of the waffle. What, would, what are you getting rid of? Probably crepes. What? Yeah, I'm just not a huge, they're too thin. It, it just takes too much. Have you, you not had a good crepe? Maybe you just haven't mouthful. had the right crepe in your life. Maybe. I think that's maybe. it. Maybe. Crepes I had were not not up to par. I guess they can be they can be great. You need to go to France and get yeah. some actual French crepes. Then maybe I'll go. change my mind. Yeah, I got a budget for that. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and being my co-host. Hey, I know anytime. I kind of threw you into this. That's okay. Um, she didn't know she was going to be my co-host until she got here. That's okay. Uh, and then I said, "Hey, by the way, Chad's not here, uh, and Juan couldn't make it." So, well, I'll be the third best. I'll be the not, third not best. That you're the third best. You, you're you're you you're my first pick, but those guys already have have dibs on on hosting duties. But thank you for being here. Yes. Um, we'll put the flyer up for Second Chance Thursday again, just so everybody has that information. Uh, as always, if you have questions, you can email us policeweb at wichita.gov. or you can email me at L Camry. That's L K I M is in Mary R E Y at wichita.gov. Yeah, she can answer all of your Second Chance Thursday questions. Um, other community policing related questions. Absolutely. Is there anything else that, that people need to know about coming up? Well, um, 
we're working with Youth Horizons currently, which is like a mentoring thing. Mm-hmm. And so next week we get to do our first meet and greet with the that group of kids and oh, working with them. Cool. So we're really excited about yeah. that. We'll take us some pictures. And yeah, stuff. We're, we'll take some pictures and post them on both both pages. Awesome. Stay tuned. Um, make sure to follow our Facebook, Twitter, all of our social media accounts for updates uh, on the happenings here at the Wichita Police Department. And we will see you next time on Coffee Break.